Hello students, welcome back to uh, chapter 9. We're just going to wrap up the last uh, few slides. Um, so the last um, video we talked about the exchange rate forecasting, whether it's uh, you believe in that efficient market school chain of thought or the inefficient market school. The approaches to forecasting um, assumes that the inefficient market school is correct and believes that um, forecasting services and approaches can be used to better predict uh, future exchange rates. So there's two approaches that uh, we briefly talk about. Um, one is a fundamental approach which uh, we'll talk about first and then the next slide will be more of a technical analysis. So the fundamental analysis uh, as it st states there draws on uh, various economic theories to construct sophisticated echometric models for predicting exchange rate movements. So some of the variables include the money supply, growth rates, inflation rates, and interest rates. So those are the variables you're going to put into your little model, your formula to determine or predict um, future exchange rates. The um, technical um, approaches to forecasting uses um, price and volume data to determine past trends which are expected to continue into the future. So this is based on the premise that there are analyzable market trends as it says and trends and waves and that future trends and waves can be used to predict future trends and waves rates. So this um, approach would use some of the um, smoothing forecasting methods that you may have talked about in uh, some of your uh, third and fourth year courses. Um, some more of the um, um, kind of uh, forecast methods that you would discuss in uh, statistical uh, courses. Um, we're not going to go over any examples of this because um, at this point for this course all we need to understand is the uh, different approaches, different uh, processes to that can be used to predict um, future exchange rates. And earlier we mentioned that the the uh, that the prediction services aren't um, as um, perhaps correct or um, reliable as one would hope. Contrary to the uh, that efficient market school, which would you know state that. Um, um, the uh, exchange rates are, are being predicted well using the um, some of the market forces using um, the collective predictions of uh, the experts in the field. Um, last couple of slides: free convertible currency, um, non-convertible currency. So. Um, some currencies are not convertible to other currencies due to various government restrictions. So a non-convertible currency, as it says there, both residents and non-residents are not allowed or are prohibited from converting their holdings of that home-based currency into another currency. That currency cannot leave the country or it cannot be converted to another currency in country or out of country. Um, externally convertible currency, as it says there, non-residents can convert their holdings of domestic currency into a foreign currency, but the uh, residents are not able to. And the last slide, something we'll talk about more in Chapter 13, is counter trade. Um, and there's a few different types of counter trade, but we'll leave that for chapter 13. This is basically used when currency is not convertible, but the country still needs to buy or sell various uh, goods or services. So this is a uh, barter-like um, services or agreements, which uh, you can, instead of buying something and using cash to facilitate, that, facilitate or complete that transaction, you're going to be bartering your country's or your company's goods and services for another country's goods and services. And as I said, uh, more of that in Chapter 13.
So that is it for chapter nine. Um, chapter nine and ten get into some more technical um, elements of uh, international business. Um, nothing that um, we need to um, really focus on, other than the uh, the brief introduction that we have made. So that is it for chapter nine.